Hi, we're outside today to run an experiment, but also to make an announcement. I'll be introducing a contest where I'll be giving away at least $15,000 to software developers. More on the contest later in this video. But first, the experiment. All right, this is an experiment that I am sure everyone has done before, probably when you're a little kid, but you haven't stopped to think about how it works, especially at the particle level. And that is tossing a rock into a pond because it's a simple demonstration of the conservation of energy. Energy from my arm transfers to the motion of the rock, gravitational energy will pull it back down to the earth, and then eventually transfers energy to the water molecules that spread out as waves up across the pond. But what is that energy and what are we seeing as waves? So to understand this process, we're going to use a computer simulation. Now here in slow motion, let's watch the rock hit the water's surface and it creates circular waves. But what we're really seeing is the oscillation of water molecules which make up water. And what is a water molecule? H2O. Here they are oscillating. And we're going to zoom in so we can see H2O, which is one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. Now we're going to zoom even further, right, to one of those hydrogen atoms. And you'll find that it's made of an electron blue orbiting a proton in red. And I've removed that white shading for hydrogen so you can actually see the atom here rotating in different directions. Now, just zooming into the center of the atom's nucleus, we find that the proton itself is even a composite particle. Now, today the proton is believed to be made of these particles called quarks. Let's do the same thing for the electron now. Let's zoom in and we find that it has strange wave patterns. It's explained in quantum mechanics as wave-particle duality, something the electron and many different particles have. Imagine if we now have a microscope that's powerful enough to zoom in and see the electron's waves and even smaller particles like the neutrino. But these oscillations are difficult, right, for us to visualize. So we're going to just do a different view of this uh, and see waves. Notice the similarity to the pond? Now, thanks to computer graphics, we just zoomed into a level of detail much smaller than atoms and even smaller than the particles that make up atoms. And that's not something that a real world microscope is able to do today. And when we cannot see something physically with our eyes, we need to interpret what it's doing. And we do so with explanations, with mathematics. And unfortunately, everything that is smaller than the atom that we can't see is governed by a separate branch of physics. And it's separate from the classical laws, the laws that are used to calculate objects larger than atoms that we can see. And the question is, why? Why should the universe operate under two laws. And the hypothesis here is that it does not, that the universe operates under one set. And so we introduced the EWT project with a very simple objective, which is to simulate the creation of particles, atoms, and matter with only classical physics, illustrating that the universe operates under a single set of laws. Why? Because when we can achieve this objective, it will give us a much better understanding of the universe in which we live. And the first version of the Project Simulator has been created, and it's called the Quantum Microscope. It's an open source simulator of subatomic particles and the formation of matter using only classical physics. And it's open source to be extended and improved by the development community. And so next, I'm going to give you a quick preview of its current features. So we're going to start off by creating a small universe and this time zooming out. Now in this case it's a cube of something, right? It's a medium for fields and light to travel which is called many things but we're going to stick with space-time. And I can rotate it and you can see it in many different views including a wave pattern. But here in light blue, notice the motion of the smallest particle which is the neutrino. Now it's difficult to do that number of calculations. So the simulator has different settings for size and dimensions, such as this example, to make it an even smaller universe. Now we can zoom out and you notice those tiny interactions of space-time are summarized into electric and magnetic forces. And here you can see the neutrino in motion without it. You can also see the creation of larger particles being formed, such as the electron from that wave motion and standing waves. But we think of the electron as a discrete particle, right? So there's an option here to add its shell and think of it more like a, a something, right? A discrete particle. And many particles have the property of charge where they attract or repel each other. In this case, you notice the, the blue ones, the electrons remain separated. But 
We're going to add a force. We're going to force them together such that they're within each other's standing wave boundaries. And, and notice that they stay within this range and it's known as a strong force. Just like the electron, we can add a shell colored red for the proton or even x-ray in to see that it is truly a composite particle. We're going to zoom out again. Right, you just notice that the proton attracts the electron and this becomes the first atom. Right, it's hydrogen. But as a composite particle, the proton has many forces. It's attractive, but I've highlighted the repulsive forces too. Right, that occurs at the magnetic dipole because it is a composite particle of, of those different interactions within it. Now it keeps the electron in orbit and we can calculate distances and energy levels of different um, atoms. In this case, uh, it's carbon, right? So 1SN, 2SN, 2P, just like everything else can zoom in. We're going to zoom out again though and you can see molecules. Hydrogen colored white has one electron. It's going to want to pair with other atoms. In this case, it's pairing with another hydrogen to create H2, which is molecular hydrogen. Now this occurs under normal conditions such as pressures here on Earth. But let's now imagine we increase the, the force. Let's force them together in the middle here, such as the nuclear process in the sun. What happens then? Well, in the sun, the hydrogen atoms will fuse to create other uh, atoms like helium, which you see here a few helium atoms and a leftover hydrogen atom as well. And there's a lot more features that I've just kind of glossed over, such as the uh, atom's probability cloud, if you want to see what that looks like, or in, uh, enable or disable certain orbitals such that you can see what sort of the shapes of orbitals. In this case, this is uh, neon. We'll disable everything so you can see the, the 2p orbitals and its uh, strange shape. Or simulating particle collisions. You know, as another example, you know, the, the strong forces here um, shooting into a, a proton and the nucleons, and you can witness the results, including beta decay results. They've all been added to help give us a better understanding of experiments. What I just showed you is a good start, but it is not proof of the objective. The majority of features do indeed use classical physics, which is the stated objective of the project. As an add-on to Blender, it's able to use the physics engine within this popular 3D creation suite, but the physics engine is incomplete, and so some of the features rely on animation, and even some that use physics are not quite accurate. This is not sufficient proof that the universe operates under one set of laws. And so to fully prove the hypothesis and the stated objective, all, so meaning 100%, of the features need to use simple, accurate classical physics. And that brings us to the contest to complete a 100% accurate simulator. Now it may be possible to extend the existing simulator in Blender to achieve this goal, or a developer might find that it's easier to build a new simulator from scratch in which he or she has more control over the engine that drives the physics. Whichever path is taken, the goal remains the same. Right? To be able to have every interaction accomplished using classical physics. And so requirements have been written for a developer to follow using one of these two paths. And these requirements are organized by phase, matching the same modules that you saw in the quantum microscope earlier. It starts with the smallest of particles and the physics of fields and waves, which is space-time. The proposed dates and prizes for each phase are shown in the table here, although any changes will be posted to the project page, and I'm going to include a URL in the video description. A panel of judges will help to determine a winner and a runner-up for each phase whose code may be merged into the main branch of the open source project. The first phase is scheduled to start by September 1st, and some things are still being finalized, such as the source code repository and the contest rules. However, the quantum microscope simulator that I showed earlier is already available to download if you want to see the first version. Now it requires Blender and an installation of an add-on, so a URL with the instructions is also going to be added to the video description link for, uh, for easy clicking. Everything else should be completed by September 1st, and then another video will make the announcement of the project's uh, start. So to ensure that you don't miss that announcement, subscribe to this channel. And that's it. The EWT project, a simple objective to model the world with simple physics.